there is a new trend in DeFi. More and more DeFi projects are going cross-chain. The two biggest chains for DeFi are Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. So I thought it'd be interesting to build a bridge between these two chains so that you can transfer tokens back and forth. This is not going to be easy, but if we can pull it off, we'll be able to build cross-chain and DeFi project at the bleeding edge of DeFi. Hey, if you don't know me, I'm Julian and on Eat The Blocks, I teach blockchain development. Why do we even need a bridge? On the smart contract of ERC20 tokens, there is a function called transfer that allows you to transfer your tokens to any other address, right? And since Binance Smart Chain is based on Ethereum, its addresses also respect the format of Ethereum. So can't we just call the transfer function of a token with the address of the recipient on the Binance Smart Chain and it would work? Mm, no, it wouldn't work. If you do this, it would transfer the token to the recipient address, but on the Ethereum blockchain. Even though Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain share the same technology, there are two separate networks completely independent. Smart contract on Ethereum can only interact with the Ethereum blockchain, and smart contract on Binance Smart Chain can only interact with the Binance Smart Chain. So we will need another approach. We cannot do a real transfer of token from one chain to another. However, we could create the same token on the other chain and have a system where when you want to do a transfer, you destroy a token on one chain and recreate the same token on the other chain. We actually use the terms burn and mint instead of creating and destroying. Economically, this would be correct. The same value that is destroyed is recreated. Nothing is lost, nothing is added. How would that work? We are going to have two bridge smart contracts, one on Ethereum and one on Binance Smart Chain. We are also going to have an API that runs a script 24-7. So let's say that someone with tokens on Ethereum wants to transfer his tokens to the Binance Smart Chain. First, the sender sends his token to the bridge smart contract on Ethereum, which burns the token. An event is emitted with the detail of the transfer, including the recipient address on Binance Smart Chain and the amount transferred. Then our bridge API receives the transfer event and send a transaction to the other bridge smart contract on Binance Smart Chain to mint the same quantity of token that was destroyed on Ethereum and send it to the recipient address. This is for transfers from Ethereum to Binance Smart Chain. And of course, you can also do transfers in the other direction. For that, in the Bridge API, you will need to run a second process to listen to the transfer events from the Binance Smart Chain. Okay, so this is the high level architecture. Next, we're going to start the code. So this is the code of our bridge in the GitHub repo of it, the blocks. So this is a truffle project and I will show you the smart contracts in the contracts directory. So first of all, we have two tokens deployed on Binance Smart Chain and on Ethereum and each of them inherit from token base here. So token base is an ERC20 token. And it has two important functions, mint and burn, to create and destroy token. And these two functions are protected, only the admin of the token is able to call them. Okay, so then we will see the bridge smart contract. So we'll have one bridge deploy on Binance Smart Chain and one bridge deploy on Ethereum. And both of them inherit from bridge base. So here we define a couple of variables. So there will be an admin address. So that will be an address controlled by the bridge API. Then we'll have a pointer to the ERC20 token of this chain. So if this is the bridge of Ethereum, this will be the token on the Ethereum side. Otherwise will be the token on the Binance Smart Chain side. Then we have nonce is to avoid to process the same transfer twice. I will explain after how it work and it works with this mapping also. That's a key value store where we're basically going to store which nonce we already processed. Then an event for each transfer from which address it is sent, what's the recipient address, what's the amount, the date, the nonce, and the steps. So that means if we are burning or minting, so then in the constructor, we pass the address of the token and we instantiate the admin and token variable. And here we have a burn function. So when you initiate a transfer, that's the function you're going to call with the address of the recipient and the amount. 
and here we are going to burn the token for the center of the transaction for this amount and then we emit a transfer event and we increment the nonce so each transfer will have a unique nonce and after we have another function mint so this is in the other direction where there is an incoming transfer from the other blockchain so this is the bridge api that is going to call this function so the recipient address the amount and the nonce that was used by the other chain so first of all we make sure that this is the admin that called this function so this is going to be the bridge api so this is an important difference between the mint function and the burn function the burn function anybody can call it to initiate the transfer but the mint function this is only the bridge api then here we make sure that we haven't already processed this transfer so after we update our mapping so that we cannot process the transfer twice then we are going to mint new token for the recipient for this amount and we emit a transfer event this time we specified that for the step we are minting not burning okay so that's it for the smart contracts next i'm going to explain the code of the bridge api so for the bridge api the script is inside the scripts folder it's this file if bsc bridge so first we import the json file produced by truffle for the two bridge that's where we're going to find the abi and the deploy address then we instantiate two instance of web3 one for ethereum and one for Binance smart chain so here you'll have to replace this with an url pointing to a node on the rinkeby public test net so for that you create an account on infra you create an Ethereum project and you copy paste the Rinkeby URL. Make sure to use the WebSocket URL because we're gonna need it to in order to listen to event. And then this is the URL for the Binance Smart Chain testnet. And of course, if you wanna do this on Ethereum mainnet and Binance Smart Chain mainnet, you'll have to replace the URL here. Then here you'll have to create an Ethereum address and put the private key here. So here on this line, we import the address on the Web3 instance for Binance Smart Chain so that now we can sign transaction by using this private key. Then we instantiate a contract object for the bridge on Ethereum and the bridge on Binance Smart Chain. And then we are going to listen to events on the bridge smart contract on Ethereum. We're going to listen to the transfer event and here we're gonna filter the event with step zero. So this is the minting event. And every time a new event is received, so this callback here is gonna be called. So we're gonna extract the field of the event here. Then we're gonna build a transaction to call the mint method on the bridge smart contract on Binance Smart Chain and we pass it the correct parameter. Then we're gonna get an estimation of the gas price and the gas cost for this transaction. Then here we're gonna build the parameter for this transaction. So the sending address, the recipient address, that's the bridge contract on Binance Smart Chain. Then the data, so which function we want to call with which argument and gas cost, gas price. Then we actually send a transaction here and we print the transaction hash and also print detail about the transfer. Okay, so that's it for the code of the bridge API. Next, we are going to actually do the transfer with the command line. We're gonna do transaction on a testnet of Ethereum and on the testnet of a Binance Smart Chain. So for Ethereum, we're gonna choose the Rinkeby testnet and you do need to get some Rinkeby Ether and for that, you can use their faucet so you put your address there and they're going to send you for free some Rinkeby Ether. And you will need to do the same thing for Binance Smart Chain testnet BNB tokens. So if you're not familiar with Binance Smart Chain, the native currency is BNB token. That's how you pay for a transaction. After, you will need to add the configuration for the two blockchain in Truffle config. Okay, so first here, you need to put the mnemonic 
that you use to create your admin address and here if we scroll down in the network section you're going to define two networks so if testnet and bsc testnet and so here you pass your mnemonic that's how you're going to be able to send transaction on behalf of the admin and here you're going to put the url for your ring could be node and this means that you're going to generate one address with the mnemonic and after for bsc testnet we also have the mnemonic and the url to their network okay so then in the migration folder we also have this migration file so if we are deploying to if testnet first we're going to deploy our token then we're going to mint 1000 token for the first address which is the admin then we're going to deploy the bridge and then once the bridge is deployed we're going to make the bridge the admin of the token so that it has the right to mint and burn token and for binance smart chain this is going to be almost the same thing except that we're not going to mint any token in advance and so what we're going to do is transfer token from ether testnet to binance smart chain testnet okay so here in my terminal i am at the root of the project and first you need to run npm install and after that you're going to need to run the migration for ether testnet and bsc testnet so truffle migrate reset network eth testnet All right, so the deployment is successful for the bridge spot contract on Ethereum. And next, we're going to do the same thing, but for Binance Smart Chain. So here is this is going to be BSC testnet. Okay, so our bridge is also deployed on Binance Smart Chain. So next, we're going to check the token balance on Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. So for that, I've prepared some script token balance and network is if testnet. So it's going to give us the token balance of the sender should be 1000. Yes. Okay. And for Binance Smart Chain should be zero. Oops, uh, wrong script. It's not that one is BSC token balance okay should be zero yes it is so we're going to transfer this 1000 token from ether to binance smart chain so first we need to create another terminal and we're going to run the bridge api so for that we're not going to use the truffle exec command so this is a command that inject some object in your file like web3 connected to the correct network etc but in the case of the bridge, this is connected to two different blockchains, so it's a little bit more complex. So it's just directly a Node.js script. So node script and here if BSC bridge. Okay, so now this is listening to the transfer event coming from the bridge contract on Ethereum. And on our other terminal, we are going to initiate the transfer so truffle exec script if bsc transfer and the network we send this transaction on ethereum okay let's send a transaction and in the other terminal we can see that the bridge api detected the transfer event and trigger the mean function on the bridge smart contract on Binance Smart Chain. So here we can see the transaction hash and it did process the transfer. So just to make it simple here, I reused the same address on Ethereum and on Binance Smart Chain. So that's why from and to are the same. And here we can see the amount and the date. And now we can check the balance in the other terminal. So let's see the token balance on Ethereum. So it should be zero. And now on Binance Smart Chain, 
HD 1000. And it is correct. Yes, I'm super happy we managed to make it work. I wasn't sure we'd be able to figure it out at the beginning. One interesting lesson is that from a single code base, we can do an integration between different blockchains. This is because we did an integration between two blockchains that are EVM based, but of course, if you do an integration between two blockchains that use different technologies, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging. There are a couple of potential issues with my implementation. First, it's not 100% decentralized since we rely on the private key of the bridge API. Users have to trust us and also trust that we will keep the bridge safe from hackers. Another potential issue is how to finance the bridge. With my solution, the bridge API has to pay for every transaction, but we could have a system where the sender of token also has to pay some ether to the bridge contract in order to cover the cost. Another potential issue is transfer order. Currently, transfer can be processed out of order by the bridge API, but it might be better to respect the order of the transfer requests. There are many other bridges you can build, especially between Ethereum and Layer 2 chain like Matic. Let me know in the comment down below if you're interested in other tutorials for Token Bridge. That's it for now, I will see you in another video.